Hey guys, how's it going? AK Moto here. Welcome back to another video. Today we are working on the 250. We're going to be doing some chains and sprockets and sliders, rollers, all that good stuff. And we're also going to be doing a rear tire. Now the focus of this video is going to be the sprockets, but I am also going to get this rear tire done while I do have the rear wheel off, of course, to replace the rear sprocket because this tire has definitely seen better days. It's on its last legs. And we have a new one sitting right here, so we're gonna throw that on. And for our sprockets, as you guys can see, our rear sprocket is definitely a little bit long overdue for a change as we are missing a couple teeth here and there. Let's see if I can get this to focus. There we go, that's the best I can get that. So yeah, definitely getting pretty worn out, so this is gonna definitely need replacement. Apart from our new rear tire, we also have some new drivetrain component parts. Now, I'm not gonna lie, finding parts for this bike wasn't super easy, particularly the sprockets, so I kinda had to get what I could find. Uh, so here I went with a JT rear steel sprocket. This is a uh, pretty good economy option, not crazy expensive, steel, so very, very durable. And then we went with a Sunstar countershaft sprocket for no real reason other than this is just simply what I could find. Over here, I'm gonna be doing the rear sprocket bolts. I always love to replace the rear sprocket bolts when doing a rear sprocket. And then we also have some chain adjuster bolts here as well because while we're in there, might as well replace them. These are pretty cheap and uh, definitely nice to replace these. Right back here, we got some sliders, we got some rollers. Again, I prefer to always do the sliders every time I do chain and sprockets and just restart from fresh pretty much. So we are gonna be doing all the sliders, all the rollers. And uh, again, I just really prefer to get everything all dialed in at once so that way everything can wear in together, if you will. And then we're also gonna be doing a countershaft seal preventative maintenance over here, like pretty much everything else. We don't need to do this, but because we are taking off the countershaft sprocket and parts was only like five bucks for this countershaft seal, we're gonna be doing it. So yeah, uh, just preventative maintenance is all that will be. So let's get right into this. All right guys, so the first thing to do here is here I'm gonna take off the chain. All we need is some pliers to do that and we're gonna remove the rear wheel. And I'm gonna have to get the rear tire done first and then I'm gonna move on to doing the sprocket stuff. All right guys, so here before we take off the chain, real quick, I'm gonna take off this countershaft sprocket piece of plastic guard here and we're gonna loosen up the countershaft sprocket nut. Uh, we don't need to take it off yet. We're just gonna get it nice and loose while we still have the chain holding the sprocket itself in place. All right, now that we have the countershaft sprocket nut loosened, we can remove our chain here. So we have this uh, little circlip we need to pop off. Now you can use normal pliers and they also make special circlip pliers. Uh, but here I'm just using some normal, regular pliers. Now you guys may see like a little bit of rust here in this chain, that's just because the last time I washed the bike I didn't put on any chain lube because I knew I was gonna be uh, junking this chain right after here. So to save me a little bit of mess on my fingers, I just didn't throw any lube on the chain. So yes, it is a little rusty. Again, that's not because I actually let it rust while I was using it. That's just because I knew I was gonna be replacing it here soon and I didn't put any lube on it and uh, didn't wanna make a huge mess. I'm gonna be throwing this chain away because it is no good, very, very worn. So uh, yeah, and we have a new chain. Now we don't have it here yet because uh, it hasn't been shipped out to me yet. Well, it's been shipped, but just didn't come in my original package. So uh, we'll have the chain here within the next few days. All right guys, next we are gonna remove our rear wheel here. I've already loosened up the axle nut, so we can just pop that out. All right guys, so we got the rear off here. I'm gonna quickly change the tire. And I also went in and just kind of cleaned up kind of behind the swing arm here in some spots that you normally can't hit when you're washing the bike. So I got that all nice and clean. Got the end of the swing arm here all nice and clean. So yeah, let's move on to changing out this tire real quick. So we got our rear wheel here ready to go on our tire changing stand here. 
And uh, yeah, let's get this tire changed out here. Let's get a little before clip. Definitely not a lot of life left in this tire. You can see there's whole missing chunks. And here is the after of our fresh rubber now mounted on the wheel. Now we're gonna get to replacing our sprocket. Now here we just have a couple bolts. So we are gonna use a 12 millimeter wrench to hold the nut on the back of the bolt in place. And then we have an eight millimeter Allen bit, hex key type bit that we are gonna use to uh, loosen each bolt. And here I'm also gonna wear some gloves so we don't bust our knuckles or anything like that on the sprocket's teeth. You wanna be careful when removing these because these teeth are sharp and uh, for obvious reasons, you don't wanna go punching the sprocket's teeth. So let's get this one removed and let's throw our new sprocket with some fresh hardware onto the wheel. All right, so I got all the nuts just kind of broken free because they were pretty snug as they should be holding in the drive sprocket. Uh, so here, I'm gonna go in with the same wrench, but I'm actually gonna use my little impact gun here, uh, just because most of these are pretty loose by now and we can just tap them out, save a lot of time. All right guys, so we have all the hardware removed. Uh, now I'm actually gonna save this hardware. There's actually nothing wrong with this. I could probably reuse this if I really wanted to, uh, but y'all know me, I just prefer to replace things, you know, when I'm in here doing it anyway. And these bolts were pretty inexpensive to get. Uh, I think it only cost me like three bucks or so to get all new bolts, so I did that. But I am gonna keep these bolts around just in case. So all we have to do here is simply lift off our sprocket. I'm gonna go in here and kind of clean off where the sprocket sits and just some of the areas kind of around the sprocket that you normally wouldn't be able to get to very easily when washing the bike. Now here you guys can see the mounting surface. All we need to make sure is that there's no dirt, no grime, no debris on this surface and that it's completely flush and flat. Uh, here you can see there is a little bit of coloring on it but we don't have to worry about any of that. All that matters is that it is all debris free and flat and flush and this here is. So all we have to do now is simply lay on our sprocket. It's pretty self-explanatory which way it goes on. Of course, you wouldn't want it backwards, but nine times out of 10, you can't really mount it backwards, but there we go. So we can just simply line our sprocket. There's no special way or orientation for most bikes that it has to go on in. Uh, so it really doesn't matter how I have it clocked here as long as it's facing the right way. So now we have our fresh bolts here. What's cool about these is they have some thread locker applied to them from the factory, so we don't have to worry about that. All we gotta do is simply slide all these bolts into place, and these bolts will actually help align the sprocket to the hub. And then we'll put on the washers and locking nuts on the back side. Now in the little hardware kit I used, uh, it doesn't look like they actually gave us any washers, so we're just gonna reuse the old ones. And uh, these bolts are the exact same length and these nuts are the exact same size as the old ones. So I know, you know, we have to use washers. That's how it is OEM. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna reuse the old washers here and uh, yeah, there's no reason we can't. They're just washers here and they're all in great condition. And not only do they have the Loctite on the bolts from the factory, they also have these locking nuts. Uh, if you buy bolts and they don't have the Loctite from the factory, that's fine, but you need to make sure these nuts have locking, little locking tabs on them. And uh, again, if you, buy a sprocket bolt kit and they don't have this little bit of thread locker on them, you might want to apply a little bit of medium strength thread locker yourself. All right, now that we have all the nuts started and in place, uh, just to make sure we're not gonna cross thread any of them, uh, I'm gonna now go in with our little electric impact and a 12 mil wrench and we're just gonna snug them down here and then afterwards we will torque them down. All right, now that we have all the bolts snugged down and seated in a place, we're gonna take our little torque wrench here and we're gonna torque all these bolts down to 31 pound-feet of torque. Now here, as I torque down each bolt, I'm gonna add a small little dot with a paint pen in the center of the bolt. This is just something I personally like to do uh, just so I can remember which bolts I have and have not torqued yet, uh, as you definitely don't wanna leave any bolts untorqued, loose, 
that'll destroy your hub and destroy your sprockets real quick. Uh, so it's very important you torque all these down to spec here. Again, our OEM spec is 31 pound-feet of torque. So we're gonna be doing that. And uh, here I'm gonna go in a crisscross pattern. It probably doesn't matter that much as this is just a big hunk of steel, you know, just a sprocket. Um, but I'm gonna go in a crisscross pattern. It ain't gonna take me any extra time. So uh, let's torque this bad boy down. All right, now that we have all of our bolts torqued down to spec, we can now install the wheel. Um, but here before we install the wheel, I'm gonna go in and replace the sliders and install our countershaft sprocket. We're gonna do our countershaft seal. Uh, so let's get to that right now. Here we have a little locking tab. Basically, you bend over the tab. It has two of them here um, to lock the nut in place so it doesn't go loose, obviously. I bought a new one of these so we don't have to reuse this one, but if we had to, we totally could. And then the sprocket just simply slides right off of the counter shaft here and then you'll notice here there's a flat side of the sprocket and a grooved curved inside. The grooved side will face in and then the flat side will face out. It's a little dirty behind here so before we start messing with these seals I'm gonna go in and clean up any residue and debris, any chain lube that may still be stuck in there. Here it appears that we have a circlip and a small plate to remove before we can actually access the counter shaft seal. So let's pop out this circlip. All right, so we got this little circlip out or snap ring. I think these are actually called snap rings, not circlips. The circlips are the ones with the little holes in the ends. Um, but anyway, we got this snap ring out. I uh, just worked it out with some little picks. And then here we have a little metal plate. Here there's a little inner collar metal piece that we can remove. Uh, I'm gonna use a pick. It has a small little ledge, I guess you could call it. It's like a groove on it that'll help us pull it on out. So I'm just gonna use a 90 degree pick here and slowly work it out. All right guys, so this is our new seal and collar, uh, but just to show you guys how it's sitting in the engine right now, this is exactly how it's sitting. Uh, so we have the seal and then the collar right there, and then you'll notice there's a small groove. So we can use that to kind of pry or slowly work out the old collar, because it's gonna be a little difficult to remove. Uh, so here I'm just gonna go in with two picks and slowly work it out. We wanna make sure not to damage the aluminum cases or anything like that. So here we have two 90, 90 degree picks. And I'm just gonna use these along with the little groove and the old collar just to work it out evenly. And just like that, we have the old collar out. If I'm gonna be honest with you guys, in most cases, you will be able to reuse this, but because the seal rides on it and over time it can develop a groove, I'm gonna replace it. It's super cheap, and normally when you are doing a counter shaft seal, you are gonna replace this part. Now I'm gonna go in here with a specialty tool called an oil seal puller, or an engine seal puller, seal puller, whatever you wanna call this thing. It pulls seals, and it does it pretty well. Uh, you can also use a flat blade screwdriver, but you just gotta be really careful not to nick or damage anything. Um, but here I have a fancy little seal puller tool. These are like 10 bucks on Amazon. Um, but here I'm gonna see if we can work it out using this tool. And what do you know, works like a charm. You just gently wanna let that out. Here we have a little bit of oil dripping, um, but not so much to where I'm concerned. We're just gonna put a rag over here to catch any oil coming out. Now one thing you do not wanna forget about is there's actually an O-ring on the counter shaft um, that is sitting in a little groove. It can be very easy to miss, but you wanna make sure you replace that. That little O-ring is just as important as the outer oil seal. So we're gonna take that out. We're gonna need a little pick to work it out because it is, uh, Definitely down in a little groove. Not that easy to get to. But we should be able to work it out. Almost there. There we go. So we got the little O-ring out. Just like that. Here I'm gonna go in with a clean shop towel and clean up kind of the surrounding area around the seal. You wanna be very careful not to shove any dirt into the engine here. 
Now we are gonna install our new O-ring. This is a really small little O-ring, so you wanna be very careful when installing it. Here I have put a light coating of assembly grease. You can use engine oil, um, but yeah, you just wanna make sure you put a little lube on the O-ring before you install it, and be very careful when installing it. You don't wanna break it. All right guys, so I've moved the camera so you guys can see this little O-ring a little better, but here I have two 90 degree picks which I'm gonna use to slide it into place. But here you can see it's not in place yet, it's just kind of sitting on the top of the counter shaft. Um, I, I apologize if you guys can hear that car alarm in the background, but anyway, we're just gonna push this forward into its groove, and you can see it just worked itself on into the groove. That's why I like to use the grease or a light coat of oil, whatever you have. Uh, just helps things slide, slide, uh, slide together a little easier. Uh, so you guys can see the o-ring is now in its groove sitting pretty close to flush and now we can install our outer seal all right guys now we're going to install our oil seal with the light uh, a little bit of oil or assembly grease on the inner lips of the seal and on the outer just to help assembly and you want to be very very careful you only want to push the seal in just far enough to where you can get the snap ring in place uh, you do, it, it can be very easy to push the seal in a little bit too far on this bike you just want to get it just barely far enough in to where you can uh, essentially just install your snap ring. All right guys, so we've got our seal in place. Now I can just put on the sprocket right here right now, um, but before I actually uh, put on the sprocket and uh, actually bolt it down here, I'm actually gonna replace the chain slider first because we'll have a little bit more room. So let's do that right now. All right guys, so we have our chain slider in place here. Uh, just reuse the old hardware hardware because there's no reason to replace it here. Um, so we have three bolts, one right here, one right back there, and then one underneath in the same spot as this one. Uh, you just wanna make sure when you are tightening this down uh, that you're very, very easy on the hardware. So you basically wanna run it down and snug it down by hand um, or just like with the socket, just make sure it's seated against the swing arm and then just give it just a tiny bit more of a turn with a, a ratchet, but you really, really don't want these tight at all. Uh, it is very, very easy to strip these threads out because they just thread directly into the aluminum swing arm. And the way I see it, it's a whole lot easier to replace one of these little bolts than to have to rethread uh, your swing arm and have to install like a Healy coil or rethread, just cut new threads. Uh, not fun, I had to do that on my 125, lesson learned. Um, just be very gentle with these bolts right here. And uh, just use some Loctite, some medium strength Loctite, blue thread locker, and just let this stuff do most of the work. You don't want to put a lot of torque on these bolts. Now while I'm over here, I'm also gonna be replacing the chain rollers because I simply think the chain rollers on this bike are pretty cheesy. I mean, this one really doesn't even roll free anymore because the bearings inside weren't really sealed well and uh, they just straight up rusted out. And then this top one doesn't really have any bearings to it. It's just a piece of plastic on a little pin. So it just feels a little flimsy for a, you know, like a, a thousand dollar bike, you know, it just feels kind of cheap. So I'm gonna be replacing both of these with some new primary drive ones. So let's get that done right now. It's really, really simple, just a couple of bolts. And uh, yeah, gonna do a whole lot um, in just terms of the overall feel and functionality of these rollers. And here's a quick look at the chain rollers I'll be using. Uh, two of the same size by Primary Drive here. Uh, I'm not sponsored, I wish I was, but uh, I think these are really, really good quality rollers. Really wanted to upgrade to these ones. I have these on my 125 and they've worked great. They're two sealed bearings right there. And uh, yeah, overall I think they're just much better quality rollers than the OEM ones. So we're gonna be installing those here. And it also comes with some new hardware but I'm probably just gonna reuse the OEM stuff. But uh, yeah, let's get these installed.
All right guys, here off camera, I went in and installed our new chain adjuster bolts. Put a little grease in there to prevent them from seizing and just make them a little easier to turn. So those are all good to go. We have all of our new sliders in, so we have our new chain block plastic or chain guide piece right here. We have our chain slider right over here. And then we have two brand new chain rollers. I love these things, they're just so much better quality. Uh, two ball bearings in them and uh, yeah, just a whole lot better than the kind of cheap feeling stock one. And then of course we have the same exact one for the lower right down there, all good to go. So here let's install our rear wheel that is sitting right back there with a fresh sprocket and a fresh tire. Uh, let's get our counter shaft sprocket on, let's get our chain on and let's get this thing all dialed in. All right, so we have our chain on here, and here we have a couple extra links. The chain came a little bit too long, and of course it's a lot better than the chain coming too short. Now you can actually buy chains that come with the exact amount of links for your bike, um, but this one is more of a slightly more universal type, I guess you could say. Uh, so it comes, of course, a little longer than it needs to be, and that is a-okay. So here I'm just getting my chain breaker tool. I'm gonna shorten a few links off this chain. We're gonna install our master link, and we'll be good to go. All right guys, so we are very close to being done. Here before we uh, torque down our counter shaft sprocket nut, I'm gonna install our case saver. I'm not gonna be running the plastic guard anymore. I'm just gonna run the case saver piece itself here and I shined it up a little bit uh, just to make it look a little nicer. Um, but yeah, we're not gonna be running the plastic guard anymore just so it's a little easier to kind of clean up in this general area. And it also makes kind of keeping an eye on the counter shaft sprockets wear uh, a little bit easier. And then here, because we aren't running the plastic guard anymore, we have to uh, use some slightly shorter bolts. Uh, so I'm just using some I had laying around here. Last thing to do here is torque this counter shaft sprocket nut down to 55 pound feet of torque, according to our Yamaha manual. Let's torque this down. All right guys, there we go, and that is a chain and sprocket, sliders, rollers, the whole nine yards replacement on a 2021 Yamaha YZ250F. As you guys can see, we got the fresh sprockets. I really went a little bit overkill. I pretty much redid the whole entire drivetrain, so sprocket, sliders, rollers, uh, even shined up this little case saver here. So I went a little bit overkill, but as you guys can see, the end result is really nice looking. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but just the look of all the fresh parts and the fresh hardware, even on the rear sprocket, just the fresh little bolts, just all really ties in together really well in my opinion. And then we have a little gold chain too, um, for a little bit of bling factor, that'll maybe last for a ride or two and then get dull. <laughs> but anyway guys, we also got the rear tire fresh rear tire. I've definitely needed to get a fresh rear on this bike for a while now, so it's good that we finally got that done. So yeah, guys, here I'm quickly, here I'm quickly <laughs> gonna get the garage a little bit cleaned up, because as you guys can see, I made a little bit of a mess and uh, definitely wasn't too organized here today. Uh, so I'm gonna get this cleaned up and uh, let's take a final look at our sprockets and chain, all that fresh stuff.
right guys, and there we go. We are all done replacing chains, sprockets, sliders, and rollers on this 2021 Yamaha YZ250F. And of course, you guys saw we also did the rear tire. Hope you guys have enjoyed this quick little video on doing the chain and sprockets on my bike. And uh, yeah, definitely was way past due, so got the, all that done and dialed in. So yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Hopefully some of you guys find this helpful. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.